Okay. We, so last time we made all the commits. Now we are, I guess, is there a diff right now? Um, no. Cool. Because we I, didn't make much progress yet, or it's not. Yeah, so we wanted really to go from... We wanted to detect when the button goes from, like, the exact frame where it goes from up to down. And uh, right now, the on-click thing, this, we had it print something, but it would print over and over and over again. So we want to have it only do the very first time. I think I remember that you were starting to create variables that say what mm -hmm. state, what the state yeah. is, like whether similar to some other place where we had like a prior something, maybe it was prior X and prior Y and a current X and a current Y, something like that. Pressed. Okay, cool. Where is that death process? Okay. This does uh, not work. That is but... the wrong process. Okay, maybe this one. Yeah, this is probably it. Let me turn on line numbers. But I think it's yeah. the right concept, but it doesn't work. Okay. So we need... Um, pressed Q. So you have, oh no, I turned on multiple cursors. I hate it when I do that. Don't know how to get rid of it other than to just do that. <laughs> One of these days, I got to learn how I do that and then maybe look into using them on purpose. Um, okay, so so yeah, so we need to use, well, one way that I can think of that would prop, that seems like it would work is to use a variable that keeps track of what the state was and then what it is on the next, uh, on each frame. And then you can detect the exact frame where it goes from where, the first frame where the prior frame was not clicked and the current frame is clicked. Um, so this method gets called on every frame, this process method. So, uh, yeah, it can probably do all of the bookkeeping involved and detecting uh, when the when it goes from up to down or from down to up. So do you have uh, you started off by making pressed Q equals none and then you did prior pressed Q equals pressed Q and you said this probably doesn't work. Um, maybe we could go run it and see what happens. What else do you have? Um, I have, I added this. Okay. Uh, I added, um, I added th this. Pressed Q. So if if mouse playgame dot mouse dot get pressed zero okay so I'm at the same spot there then we have self dot color equals whatever and then here you have pressed oh my gosh Q is now true okay. And you 
wrap this in another if. If pressed Q is true and prior pressed Q is false. Or if it's none. Oh, uh, okay. Because, because pressed Q could be none. Yeah. Or prior pressed Q. Oh. Uh, prior pressed Q. Thank you. Autocorrect equals none. Um, so if either of those are true, then do these two things. Mm -hmm. if, and then, yeah. If this thing, okay. And what happens if you run that code? Um, or is there it, any other? Actually, code? I don't know. I don't know what. Actually, I don't know what I was trying to do here. Uh, Prior pressed. Oh, but it's commented out. Uh, yeah, I just did. Um, okay, so it's yeah. still printing like a lot. Um, let's see, button clicked. Yeah, so this lambda is being run many, many times. Mm -hmm. So how do we fix it? It needs that? to be, I guess, we would need a time, I guess, a delta time, because I think that would be like, because a click is going to be more than like one frame always, right? You can't expect them to only go like, like quick, like do the click only for like one exact uh, second. Like, people, people do frame perfect, uh, single frame button inputs, uh, all the time for speed runners and stuff. Um, and that's like they have to do it on a specific frame. Like they can't just do a single frame whenever. They have to do at a specific moment in the video game. Um, so I think people are capable of doing frame perfect uh, button presses. Well, I know people are d capable of doing it because I've seen it. <laughs> um, uh, but also, I think we didn't do that for the bouncing, We, but we are able to detect bouncing. We are able to detect the ball uh, hitting a wall, and we use the prior whatever variables to do it. So I think we can do it here as well, detect clicking using similar ideas. So maybe let's go look at how do the other, how do we detect, where else do we use this prior something and what do we do with it? So prior, not those. Okay, prior center, prior center X and Y. And then we have prior right edge, prior left edge. Because we couldn't, I mean, this is just a convenience wrapper. Uh, we couldn't just use, I mean, we could have done this math, adding the radius or subtracting the radius, um, instead of having a function do it. Um, So the main thing is, I think the important thing here is we are still using prior center dot x or dot y. Um, but okay, so how how do we like what's the what's the important part about this code? Like how does it detect hitting the edge? 
um by checking the wait what oh yeah by by just like seeing where the position is compared to where it was and then if it was um if it was like past zero or like or then you would know that it's yeah or yeah i, I don't know why i blah, 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 blah. So this um, right here yeah. is the method that detects this is only ever true right when it hits the well for this one the left hand side of the window mm -hmm. so somehow okay. this is true only on the one frame where we hit the left hand left hand side of the window so we need to do something like this but this only works because of some bookkeeping elsewhere where we update uh, the value that left edge and prior left edge return. Um, and those, they generate their value based on center uh, and prior center. So like these things center and prior center mm -hmm. so we need to do something like this and this with the clickedness where else do, does prior come up in the ball class this is the ball class, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. I'm being, uh, I'm, I'm intentionally trying to not just say, here's what we should do, and instead trying to uh since there's already an example i'm trying to uh allow you to look into it and figure it out and generate a re, uh a similar mechanism mm -hmm. based on this example yeah why does it not like oh because the type this. I think that's what it's complaining about. Where does it say? Why red squiggly? What if I put my mouse over it? Ah, argument of type none cannot be assigned to parameter x of type int in function whatever. That's cool. Anyway, let me see. What are you doing? Well, I just move. Well, one, I'm going to move this into the in it because. Okay. Cool. Uh, mm -hmm. I will try to follow along. Class baton. And where do you put that here ish? Self dot. Pressed equals self dot pressed and self dot pressed is equal to none. So you put that here, I think. Yeah, just before the colors and just after this. Uh, 
Oh. So you have oh dev rest self. Um, we I believe we can't do this exact name pressed because we already have this variable with the same or the attribute field with the same name. I believe these have to have different names. Uh, okay, uh, then we can just do Q. Yeah. And then this would return true, right? If the mouse is on the button and it gets pressed, then you return true. Is this mouse on screen on button? Is that the name of a function or something? Or do we? Oh, it's right here. Oh, okay. Well, that means oh, I, can't I see. Um, um, you have that in process. So, oh, mouse. I might have to be back in process. <laughs> um. What is that plugin? What is this? What does get focused mean? Oh, that was a thing to like detect if it was like going like that or like that off the screen, right? Yeah, get focused was whether the mouse was actually on over the window, I think. Okay, well, I'll just make that into a mouse on window is equal to get focused. Yeah. So I I saved that in a variable called mouse on window. So I think mouse dot get focused is whether the mouse is on the window. Okay. Um. Yeah, we can probably extract this out into a method where called mouse on screen on button oh my goodness Dev. mouse on screen on button You need to put that on top of pressed Q, right? Uh, no. No? All oh, okay. the functions inside of a class can call all of the other functions inside of a class. Oh. Um, huh. It looks like... Ah. Uh, mouse. We got mouse is equal to pi game dot mouse. Or this is what I copied in there. Where that's on screen on button. Oh, I see. Got it. And so you return. Okay. 
Do you not just return this? What yes. did this give you? Um, mouse wait, equals pi game mouse, mouse on button. Button. Okay. All right. And then here in pressed queue, you would have to say self dot all of that to, in order to call it. And then to call it, you would put the parentheses at the end here. Oh yeah. And then wait, mouse dot get pressed. Where did I get the get pressed from? Uh or is that just a in game uh a pie game thing? That's uh probably a pie game thing. Get pressed. So this says whether the button is currently pressed. Not did it just get pressed, but like whether the button is actually up or down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what pressed Q should signify, right? Is it pressed? Yes or no? Right? Uh, depends on what you mean by those words. Um, Yeah, so pressed Q, well, the main thing that we want is to be able to have a function that only executes once when you go from up to down. So if... I'm not exactly sure what you have in mind, so. Okay. Well, so the way we did it last time, right, yeah. was having something continuously check the position. So this is like the, this press queue I, I'm seeing as like the, the ball's like actual left edge. And then here, and then the oh wait no this wouldn't return true this would make it this would make self dot pressed true right so if the mouse is on screen and on the button and if the left button is pressed then self dot press is set to true. Uh, pressed Q. So you have so here. Then you have if pi game dot mouse dot get pressed zero. Then self dot pressed is true. Um, if both of these, if all three of these conditions are true, then we're setting the self dot pressed field to true. Um, so the current button is pressed if the mouse is on the button and the mouse button is down. That seems reasonable. Um, pressed Q. Q is like query. So this would be, is the button pressed? And this is setting whether the button is pressed. So that seems, uh, that would be a little bit unconventional mm, okay wait huh wait left edge
So we had a center and a prior center. And initially, center is set to some value that is passed in or a default value if there is no initial value passed in. And then what happens? Prior center is initialized as is initialized also in the init method of ball. So both center and prior center start off with some value. Uh, and then, then we do this. So it kind of seems like this line isn't doing a whole lot. Oh, it is creating an object that has a dot X and a dot Y and saving that into prior center. Um, does vector 2D just not have... Oh, yeah, so we could have used the initializer there, um, but okay. So, class ball, oops, class ball, okay. So, we create prior center. We could have put here the values uh, for the center here. Mm. Um, but so the main, I think the main important takeaway here is that we give center and prior center values in the in the init method. Okay, so yeah, we have pressed, I guess if the press can be none, no, it can be false, because it's not pressed. Unless, yeah, no, it's not pressed when it first, when you first get in. And then prior press would also be false. And then... And I guess this could be instead of pressed Q, it is pressed. So if it is pressed, we want self.pressed to be true. Um, and then you would update, I guess you would update here. Wait, I, I guess the problem is like when do I update from self dot pressed? Uh, when I up update self dot pressed, not self dot prior pressed. Um, is it always updated? So here, here's where we update. Uh, prior center. To be the current center. And that's done whenever. Uh, update position is called and that is in update so first we update velocity then we update position so when we get a new x and y a new center x and y just before setting that center x and y we set the prior center x and y to the current center x and y so just before setting the new value we save what the current value is in prior that way uh this that way we, re we remember the value that we just had as the current value and then okay. that makes sense we calculate the new current value and save that as the current value. So we want to do something like that. And this happens in update position. Update position happens in update. Update happens in process. <laughs> process happens once every frame for every object. 
So uh, this loop is it even we even have right here frame plus equals one. So this loop runs once per frame. It does all the calculating of where things need to move and then draws all the things and then it's done with the frame and then it goes back up to the top. So uh, following that back down the other direction, process calls update and then update calls process process calls update and then update calls update velocity and update position update position modifies the prior and current uh, center so in button button also has a process and I guess we could go up there uh, dev process this is in button so in here we start updating so this this should happen once per frame so we could do something like update pressed to like some calculate whether the button is pressed but we also need to before assigning pressed a new value we need to save the old value and then assign a new value to the um to pressed just like Uh, let's see. Button ball. Just like here, when we do update, and then we do update position, we save the old value first, then we calculate the new value. So here, these two things. We want to save the old value first, then calculate a new value and, and save that new value into the... Current. So would something simple, just like is pressed in the is pressed function, you would just, and before setting self.pressed equals true, you would just self put self.prior underscore pressed equals self.pressed. Uh, yeah, you could do that. So... Pressed. So here you could do self dot prior pressed is set to self dot pressed and then set self dot pressed equal to true. This will only update prior when you set pressed to true. We need to. At some point, the person is going to let go of the mouse also. Uh, so we need to, at some point, set pressed equal to false, too. Oh, yeah. Wait, did I show you? So my room, I have the... I have, like lights where I can change what color they are. So I was trying to get rid of the speckles. Where are they? Speckles, like this area, there's a bunch of speckly stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And so I thought if I turn the lights green, that might do it. Um, and uh, I didn't. It didn't really occur to me, but I I did it, and then I noticed that when I did it, I also disappear. That's me. Yeah. 
There, I got rid of most of the speckles. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Uh, I guess this would be def unpress. Also, uh, wait, I just realized... Yeah. These are functions, so we have to call them for this to be run somewhere. Um, yep. And then it's... Okay, that, yeah. I agree. So, um, I think, so we want to calculate, so here we're calculating what the new center is, um, and we're updating position to that new center, um, and then here, this this method, the name suggests that it's just figuring out whether the button is pressed, not, it's not, um, uh, setting the value. It's just, I mean, this name sounds like it's just figuring out what the value is. Um, so it's slightly different. So here we're figuring out we're figuring out what the what the new position is and we're setting the center to that new value. And here we are this name sounds like it's figuring out whether the button is pressed. Um, so I think maybe, maybe this should have a different name. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, what would you, what would you name, how, what would be a better name? To indicate that we are we're not just figuring out whether it is pressed like we're not this we're not calling this function and then looking at its return value to see whether the button is pressed the, this function is actually setting an internal state variable that says whether the button is pressed Uh, so, do you have uh, thoughts on a better name? Um, I'm not. I don't know. Um, I guess it would be update pressed. Okay. Alrighty, so if we are, so we're, we're setting pressed equal to true here, and then you have, um, else, I, I don't know how to make it, I guess I'm not sure. Like, I guess, because get pressed only works when it's pressed, and then I don't know how to detect when it's not pressed without using our pressed values. I guess that would be... Um, so this, uh, this update pressed, um, 
the way update position works is it calculates what the new position will be and then sets the center variable to have that new value no matter what. So here we could do a, an analogous thing would be calculate whether the button is pressed and then set this variable to whether or not the button is pressed no matter what. Whether we find out that it is or is not pressed. And then just before setting it, we want to save whatever the value was into a different variable so that later we can compare these two. We can use both of these variables to figure out it might be pressed right now, but did it just get pressed or has it been pressed for longer than one frame? So, uh, something like what we have is capable of doing that. We're saving whatever the prior value was just before setting it to a new value. And we're actually doing that uh, whether we set, whether the new value that we set is true or false. So now, as long as this gets run every frame, we will be able to detect uh, when the ex the exact frame when the button gets pressed because that will be the frame where pressed is true and prior pressed is false. Assuming this logic is correct uh, for figuring out whether the button is currently pressed. And which uh, it might be. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Then here. So process. Okay, I think we should do a click. And then, like outside of process, we should do def click and def. What did we call it? Like hold on click on hold. Yeah, so then def click and def hold. Um, so click would be like, if this is, if self that prior press is false and self that press is true, then this would, that would classify as a click. Okay. So then that would make click true. So it would be like return something. Or. Um, wait, so how do we, we have to run update pressed. Um, somewhere to yeah this is good we have to run update pressed somewhere where do we run update position update position is in update and where where do we run update it's uh, in, in process. process. In Where do when do we run process? Every second. Every, every frame. frame it gets run by this for loop. So we want to do 
ultimately it's run by it's run every frame and the way that we make sure that it's run every frame is by calling it directly or indirectly from process so we could do something similar for the button we could call it directly or indirectly from the buttons process method okay um i guess wait i just got the process okay so we in the process we need to put the text on the button we need to so this is like making the button itself um, yeah that's drawing the button um we I think for the ball, we have a separate draw method, def draw, yeah. And in process, we just call update and then call draw. And in what, uh, so in ball, we have separate functions for that. In button, we have it all in the same function. Um, it is getting a bit long, so maybe it's worth separating it out, but uh, we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just try to split it up real quick. Okay, or just not split it up, just like so I can understand where Visually, we're at. And then first... just put in a bunch of extra lines. What's up? Yeah. And then this is um, regarding the color of the button. Um, and then that's where I added where to do press, but that might not be the place to do it. Yeah. So the on click, we call it if it's callable. And if this is true, this actually, this logic might be right. I think this logic and this logic is where the issue is. So here we're unconditionally setting pressed to none. Then we're setting prior pressed equal to pressed. Uh, then down here we're setting pressed to true if the mouse is on the button and the button is pressed. And then we're right after setting pressed to true we are checking is pressed true and what is prior pressed um, here we updated pressed but we didn't update prior pressed uh, so yeah it seems like right at the very beginning of the loop we should figure out what the new values are and update all of the fields like pressed. This is where we should update pressed and prior pressed since we're updating pressed. And then later on, we can decide based on pressed and prior pressed whether to call self.onclick. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Sorry. I was looking at something else. Um. <laughs> um, so we need to write it. Well, one thing that I can think of would be that seems like it would work would be right at the beginning of process that's where we should figure out is the cur is so we're in the middle of a frame we should figure out right now is the button pressed and then save that into the variable self dot pressed um, and since we're updating self dot pressed we should save whatever the value was into prior pressed uh, and we have a function that does that now I think where was that? I thought we had a function that does that. Um, yeah, here. So update pressed. 
So this function does that thing I just said. Okay. It's at least intended to. Um, so I think we should do that right at the very beginning of process. And then later on, we can use the value of pressed and prior pressed to determine whether to, well, to help determine whether to call self.onClick. Mm -hmm. So this, this whole logic could get mostly rewritten after we call once we have the two variables that that say is it pressed right now and was it pressed on the last frame is it pressed on this frame and was it pressed on the last frame mm -hmm. so we would have to do yeah, uh, update pressed, we would do self dot update pressed. Oh, yeah. Basically, um, and then this, we've, yeah. So the, the, I would say like this click is when we like, oh, no, wait, so th this would, I'm saying the function click would determine if it was just clicked or not. Sorry, what were you saying? Um, the variables, these variables, we no longer need to update here because update process or update pressed is going to do that. So we don't need to mm -hmm. update pressed and prior pressed. Um, mm -hmm. And then down here, we use those variables, but we just took them out. So now we should redo this stuff using yeah. self dot pressed and self dot prior pressed instead. Yeah. Um, so I would oh interesting so we also use it for setting the colors okay so maybe we should just take out this part from this structure and leave behind the stuff that sets the color and we could think about rewriting this later but for now we're just interested in doing this in a different way mainly this line so oh and whether or not it's callable is important so these two lines are important and then these lines we can rewrite now Okay, wait, let's... I'm just gonna move the button, this stuff into button color, just so that the process isn't so cluttered. Uh, okay, I'm going to put a to do, move this into separate functions. Actually, I'll just, I'll put that at the top of process, because the entire thing could be separated out into different functions. Um, and we are past the our mark uh, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna go back to notes and say make the buttons change in some way um, let's see 
we are about to call or write the logic to call the on click method only once per click. Um, continue here next time. I don't think we have uh, enough. We don't have a solid, a committable diff right now. Um, yeah, so I think I think this is gonna have to suffice. Uh, review logic for uh, in determining whether the button was just clicked. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, I'm going to go. Bye. All right. Thank you, bye.